Hi, chemistry students. Uh, now that we know the definitions of acids and bases that are out there, let's talk a little bit about the equilibrium that's established, because uh, later on that will help us understand further what we mean by strong acids, weak acids, why we classify them as, as such. So let's start with acids. And what we're going to do is we're going to look at a, a very generic reaction of some acid HA. We don't know what it is, but it's a monoprotic acid and that it only has one proton right there to give away. And as an acid, we know that it will donate its proton uh, in a reaction with water. So that's what we mean by an acid dissociation reaction. So if we were to write just the equilibrium constant for this, just plain old K, we'd get this expression. K is equal to the concentration of the hydronium ion a minus the concentration of HA and the concentration of water. Now, we know that water is a liquid, and I've written just a plain equilibrium constant, K, here, which includes everything. We never use those, though. We always use something different. So what we're going to do is we're going to rearrange this. We're just going to multiply both sides by the water because as a liquid, the concentration of the water is constant. So we might as well put all the constants on one side. And we end up with this particular equilibrium expression. And this right here is just a new, just a new constant. It's the equilibrium constant K times another constant, water's concentration. And at 25 degrees C, that's something like 55.85 molar. Not important to know. The key thing is, is that we call this right here, this stuff, we call it K sub A. Some will use a lower case A and some will use an upper case A. Either one's acceptable. Whatever you're used to using, go ahead and use it. Doesn't matter. But in the end, it goes down to this. K A can be written by just taking a look at the aqueous portion of our acid dissociation reaction. So Ka is equal to the hydronium ion, the anion left over from the acid, and the acid itself, all these concentrations. So right there is your um, acid dissociation. Here's just an example that you might want to try, which is um, write down the equilibrium expression for hydrozoic acid, which has the formula HN3. And while this might be a little bit confusing for you because you're used to seeing nitrogen-containing compounds uh, th that are bases, you know this is an acid for two reasons. Number one, you're asked to find the Ka. And number two, it's named hydrozoic acid. I know that seems silly, but people tend to get into a rut when they look at this and they automatically jump and say, hey, it must be a base. It's a good instinct, but in this particular case, you can't let it be overridden by the fact that you're asked about a Ka and you're asked about hydrozoic acid. So it says write the equilibrium, uh, write the acid dissociation reaction and the equilibrium expression. So the acid dissociation reaction is HN3 aqueous plus water. I guess I should have that bonded there, which will be liquid in equilibrium with. It's an acid, so it's going to donate that proton and form H3O plus. And then N3 minus will be remaining. That'll be our anion. And Ka for this is very simple. It's equal to products over reactants, ignoring the liquid. There you go. Well, we're not done because that's just, if you think about it, that's only the um, acid. We could also do the same thing for bases. So uh, in a very similar way, there's going to be uh, an equilibrium constant K, and we could fill the whole thing in here with, uh, by the way, we're using just some generic 
nitrogen type base. These are called amines. Just remember that when you see the word amine, that is going to tell you that you've got yourself a base. Um, so we've got NX3H plus and OH minus all divided by everything here, NX3 and the water. However, you know that we're going to do something with this. We're going to take the water and bring it on over. When we do so, we end up with a new constant. All this stuff right here is just a constant times a constant. So let's call it a new constant. We'll call it K, what do you think? How about K sub B, because we're talking about bases. And that will be equal to just the aqueous portion. of our equilibrium expression. So the question is, if you have two on a test, could you do this problem right here? Could you write the, the base dissociation reaction for dimethylamine and write the equilibrium expression for it? You're given the formula for dimethylamine right here. So you don't have to know what it is, even though it's kind of obvious. It's got two methyl groups, two CH3s attached to a nitrogen in place of the hydrogens that you normally see for our friendly neighborhood ammonia. So ammonia is our, our, our prototypical base. It's got three things attached to the nitrogen, allowing this lone pair to act. So if you take a good close look at this, this really has just replaced two of those hydrogens with methyls. Not a big deal. So, could you write this reaction? Hopefully it goes like this. So we've written down the dimethylamine. It's gonna react with water. And of course, I keep writing it as HOH and sometimes putting bonds in there. If you write H2O, that's fine as well. This is gonna be an equilibrium. And so this is acting as a base. A base has a lone pair on the nitrogen, and that lone pair then can attack a proton. Steal that proton if you want, if you must from the water, giving it still two of these methyl groups. And then the nitrogen now has not one, but two protons on it or two hydrogens on it, one of a proton, and so that's gonna be a positive charge, and we're gonna be left with an OH minus. And with this, we can say, aha, K sub B will be just the aqueous parts. Better complete that. This will be just the aqueous parts. It'll be CH3, two, NH2 plus, that concentration, OH minus, all divided by the dimethylamine itself. And there you have it. So those are the equilibrium constants, K, A, and K, B, and we'll be using them quite a bit to solve problems from now on, but we had to see where they came from. So there you, there you are, you're all set.